This is a multimeter made with Arduino that we have seen in a past tutorial, and this one is a new version. The last project was ok, but I had to make a new one and that's why we have this new PCB here. You see, on my channel you can find tutorials on how to measure resistance with Arduino, how to measure current, inductance, capacitance and voltage, and all using Arduino. But I had a lot of comments to merge all meters in just one, and that's what I've made in the past tutorial. But the problem is that we have different inputs for different measurements, and I don't like that. I want to have just a single input for all the measurements, just as any other multimeter you can find on the market. And for that we need this key component, and we'll see what this is and why it's so important. Additionally, this new PCB has a new improvement, and we'll see all those in this video as well. And if you remember, the last project had some problems with the current meter, so I fixed that also. So guys, let's see this new PCB, see how to measure voltage, current, resistance, inductance and capacitance with the Arduino, see how to build this project and what we need for that, and the final results. Make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell. So let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. They not only have a great quality PCB prototype service for only $2, but now they also have a great SMT service where you can get the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place. And they also have free SMT assembly before 29 December, and that means that the customer only needs to pay the components. No need to pay assembly fees, setup fees, engineering and so on. So go to glcpcb.com and try this new service. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's first see what this PCB can do and the improvements from the last multimeter project. We start with what the multimeter could measure. We have 5 modes. Voltage, resistance, capacitance, inductance and current. And we can change between the modes using the rotary switch. Before we see the modes, remember that you could download this PCB, the schematic and the code from below. It's all shared as an open source. Then with the Gerber's files of the PCB, go to glcpcb.com and code for a new PCB, and then upload the files. Select the settings, in my case I've selected 5 PCBs and the yellow solder mask. Then you can place the order for only $2 plus shipping. The process to order a PCB is very easy. I received the boards in Spain in around 7 days. And after I mounted all the components, I had my homemade Arduino based multimeter. So let's see the modes. In mode 1 we can measure voltage with high precision. And that's because the board uses the ATS1115 16-bit analog to digital converter IC. And not just that, but now the circuit also has a full bridge rectifier with a filtering capacitor, so we could also measure AC voltage. But there's even more. The ATS1115 IC has the option of differential measurement, so now we could also measure negative voltage. The range is from minus 30 to positive 30 volts, and with 16 bits that's a resolution of 0.9 mV, which is quite good. Ok, so in the next mode we can measure resistance. In this case I'm using 3 different scales, for values between 0 and 2k, from 2k to 20k and above 20k. The scale is changing automatically in the code, when a lower or a higher value is detected. As you can see I first measure a 1k resistor. Now I measure a 10k resistor and the range automatically changed. That is made with this schematic, and as you can see by changing digital pins D3, D4 or D5 to ground, we can create different voltage dividers, and by that we can change the scale. The voltage measurement for this divider is also made with the ADS1115, because it has 4 different inputs, so we still have the 16 bits ADC for the resistance mode. In this mode we also have a buzzer that could be used to detect very low resistance and that meaning detecting short circuits. The problem is that this buzzer is a passive one, and it needs a PWM signal, but this one is connected to a normal digital pin. Anyway, let's go to the next mode. Now we can measure capacitance. In this case we have two scales as well that will automatically change. In the past tutorial the scale change was made manually, so this is also an improvement. The first scale is from 0 up to 1 microfarad, and the second one is from 1 microfarad up to very high values. 
But the problem is that just as any other capacitance meter, the higher is the capacitor value, the more time we have to wait to get the data. So let's start with a 33 picofarad value. The read is very fast. Now I change to a 68 nanofarad value. Next I test it with a capacitor of 1 microfarad. Then I have a 100 microfarad until now we get good results. And finally I insert a 470 microfarad and as you can see we have to wait a little bit till we get the final data. The process of capacitance measurement is made with timing the discharging process, using a known value resistor, so it's obvious that the bigger is the capacitor, more time we need to discharge. Ok, for the next mode we have inductance. What we do in this case is to measure the resonating frequency of an LC tank between a 2 microfarad capacitor and the inserted coil. With that frequency and a little bit of calculations, we can get the inductance value. The meter is not very precise for low values, but I had good results for values above 47 microhenries. So here I have a coil of approximately 100 microhenries. The PCB has a small operational amplifier, two capacitors of 1 microfarad and a small diode and a resistor, and with these components we can measure inductance of different coils. Remember that for each independent measurement you can see a video below. I have a separate video for each unit measurement using the Arduino. Ok, the final mode is current meter, and for that we have to flip this switch. This is the part that I failed in the past multimeter project, because I was using the wrong current IC. Now the PCB has the ACS712 component, which will give an analog voltage output according to the current passing from the IP plus to the IP negative pins. But there are three models for this IC, the one with a range of 5 amps, the 20 amps and 100 amps. In my case I'm using the 20 amps one, and now that I'm thinking, the 5 amps will be a better option, because I almost never make measurements of current above 5 amps. So the analog output from this IC is connected to the 16 bit ADC once again, and in that way by knowing the amplifier gain, we can measure the current and print that on the screen. We can measure negative current as well, from minus 20 up to 20 amps. To separate the current input from the other four modes, I've placed a switch here. In this way, when we switch this, we activate the current mode, and the main input from the probes is not connected to the other inputs and the other modes anymore, otherwise we could burn those parts with a short circuit. And again, now that I'm thinking, I should make a separate input for the probe for the current meter, because usually commercial multimeters have one input for the resistance, voltage and so on, and a separate input for the current. And by the way, on the PCB we also have a fuse, so we could protect the IC for overcurrent values. So these were all the modes that I have till now for this PCB. Using the same circuit, we could probably implement a few more features, such as frequency read or a better short circuit detector. The PCB also has pins for the OLED display, some pads for the UART communication so we can program it, the buzzer on the corner, a rotary switch in the middle and two more push buttons. We could use these buttons for different actions that I might add in the future, but for now I'm not using these buttons for anything. On the back of the PCB we have some pads for a LiPo battery of 4.2 volts like this one, and below of that we have the components for the charging circuit. This is the same circuit that I'm using on many other of my projects, and is based on the TP4056 charging IC, which has an over voltage and over current protection. To charge the battery we have a place for a micro USB connector on the side. And to power up the entire board, we have this on and off sliding switch on the other side of the board. And by the way I also have these pins here, for the serial port, so we could solder one of these Bluetooth modules and send the measured data with a Bluetooth connection, and maybe print the values to our smartphone or to a different Arduino with a different Bluetooth module. This part should be interesting and we will see that in a future video. Please see the full schematic below and the tutorial on electronews.com with more photos and text, in order to understand each part of the schematic and the code. Ok, so let's talk a little bit about how I've made this new PCB. As I told you before, the key component for this all-in-one multimeter is a rotary switch. In this way we can connect only one input to multiple parts of the schematic, for voltage, resistance and so on. But this is not a normal rotary switch with one input and more outputs. This one has three inputs and four outputs. One input is for negative probe, one is for the positive and the third one is for only VCC. I need that in order to detect the mode. As you can see in the schematic, VCC is connected to the switch and the output is connected to some voltage dividers, so depending on what voltage I read on the analog input A3, I can know which mode is selected. 
Ok, so more things that you should know. This is the voltage part from the schematic. As you can see we have the rectifier and the filtering capacitor. Then we have two dividers. I want the maximum voltage to be plus minus 30 volts. So that's why I'm using these voltage dividers. To lower the voltage below 5 volts for the Arduino. The output from these dividers is connected to the ADC in a differential mode. So we can read negative voltage as well. Ok, so I've soldered all the components on the PCB. I've made the mistake of using 0402 SMD components because I wanted to make an SMT order for this PCB. Soldering this by hand is a bit tricky. Anyway, you must start by soldering the 80 mega 328 microcontroller and the basic configuration components, such as the crystal, the pull-up resistor for the reset, the DTR capacitor and so on. Then connect an FTDI programmer like this one and test if you have a good communication. And if you do, that means that the chip is soldered well in place. Then you can solder all the other components. This is still a prototype so I haven't soldered the battery charging circuit yet. Because I'm quite sure that I will order a new and better PCB. The important part is that the main circuit works and I can measure everything that I want it. So guys, we have the full bridge rectifier here for voltage mode. The operational amplifier for the inductors mode here. Then we have the ADS1115 ADC for high precision voltage read. On the front part of the PCB we have the current amplifier for current measurement, the rotary switch in the middle, the microcontroller on top, some push buttons and then the OLED display is soldered in place with some thin wires. Also remember that we have the serial port for a future Bluetooth connection. We upload the code using the FTDI module connected to the UART pins with the TX, RX and DTR. You will need to install the ADS1115 and the OLED display libraries. You have links for that below on the tutorial page. Now the code is quite long, but as you can see, for each part, I've placed some comments so you will understand everything. I've divided the code for each mode. So we have voltage read, so read these comments here. Then we have the resistance read, the capacitance and so on. The code could be improved, so feel free to do that. I share everything in this project as open source. I've also designed a 3D case for this PCB as well. It has holes for everything, for the OLED display, for the buttons, the charging USB connector, switches, the probes inputs and the rotary switch. I've printed this case using PETG material, 20% infill and 2 perimeters. It is very easy to mount. We have to add the sliding switches that were 3D printed as well. And this will move the sliding switch on the PCB. We have to glue in place the OLED display. After that I place the PCB inside of the case. There is space for the LiPo battery as well. When everything is in place, put the back 3D printed part and close the case. So now the homemade Arduino based multimeter is done. As for the probes, I'm using the same very cheap probes. And these have some male bullet connectors that are paired for the female connectors that I have on the PCB. So it is very easy to insert them. Let's give it a final test and see the precision. We start with voltage. On each case I'll measure the unit with a commercial multimeter as well. To test the voltage I've connected in parallel with my supply, the homemade multimeter and the commercial multimeter. As you can see we get pretty much the same values. And we can measure down to just a couple of millivolts. Also we can measure negative voltage by reversing the inputs. Ok now let's test resistance. I have 3 values, 1k, 10k and 100k. I first measured the values with my commercial multimeter and we have almost 1k. I do the same with my homemade one and we have 1000 ohms as well. Now for the 10k resistor I measure 9.9 .9, and we have pretty much the same for the homemade multimeter as well. Finally for the resistor of 100k we have 99k. I measured that with my homemade one and we have the same. Now let's see capacitance. I will measure 33 picofarad capacitor a 100 nanofarad capacitor, a 1 microfarad capacitor and a 100 microfarad capacitor. I measure them with the home in multimeter and I get pretty close values to the real ones. 37 picofarads, 64 nanofarads, 1 microfarad and 100 microfarads. So these are good results. For the next step I don't have a multimeter that measures inductance. But this is a 1 microherons coil that I've bought. The value on the multimeter is pretty close, and I measure this with the oscilloscope as well. Remember that this mode measures the frequency of resonance of the LC tank, and you can see that with the oscilloscope as well. Ok, so finally we measure current. I flip the sliding switch and we are into current mode. Remember we can measure positive and negative current. 
I place the multimeters in series and I measure the same current through the resistor. The value is close enough. Remember that for better precision you could use the 5 amps IC instead of the 20 amps for the ACS 712 chip. So guys, I think that with the schematic, with the code and with all the previous separated videos, you will be able to create the same multimeter and also understand how it works. See all the links below and read the tutorial on electronus.com for more. If you have any question, leave a comment below or even better, use the new form on electronus.io. I hope that you like this tutorial and if so, give a like to this video. Also consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.